All right, today we got a complaint for a leaking gas. Um, this is a 2015 Chevy Tahoe um, LT, nothing too special about it. Now we're pouring out gas as soon as we start the vehicle. We start leaking right away from this area. Um, we're gonna go ahead and lift up the vehicle, find out what kind of name we'll call the video in a few, but there might be a hose that might be broken or it could be one of the nipples that probably is broken, but most likely um, one of the hoses might be rubbing and causing it to leak, but it does leak really bad. And I mean, it leaves a trail. So got a towed here. So let's go ahead and lift it up and see what's going on. So we can see visually we have gas leaking onto the gas tank. Um, so let's see what's going on. So you can see all that fuel that's leaking. Kind of hard to say, but let's see if I can see anything. Visually, I can't see anything from over here. Let's go ahead and drop down the tank. We don't have that much gas in it. Um, we got our hard lines right here. Um, I am gonna be dropping these down a little bit or unplugging these. So I'm gonna unplug this fuel line right here, the one up on top, because that's connected to the gas tank, and then I'm gonna be Obviously, I'm plugging this one too. Now, when I'm plugging this, now be very careful. No smoking, no spark stuff. Um, if not, you're just gonna ignite. Now, these little tabs, you have to spread apart like opening your legs, and then you'll just pull it back. If they wanna. All right, there we go. Don't take them out all the way, you don't need to. Now, when doing so, be careful with your eyes when managing with fuel. So we'll just let that hang right there. And then same thing for that one. This one, you're actually gonna pinch in. So I'm just gonna use both of my index fingers and then put them together and then push out just like that. And then the hose should come out. So. Just be careful with this sensor. I believe that's your flex fuel sensor, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so we have that out. Then over in the back, so over there we're in front of the tank when we're checking out those hoses. Now we're in the back area. Um, we got a couple hoses right over here. Easiest thing would be to do, I would say just drop down the whole charcoal canister. So just take off these three or two um, 13 millimeter bolts. Is there one more? No, there is not. Um, this is my first attempt dropping a tank on this year model. So just bear in mind. And then also jacking up spots. You can lift it up from the rear differential, but just keep in mind once you do, you have a chance of the car moving. So put some chucks in the front and the rear of the vehicle, just in case, um, on both tires. And then use your jack stands to put right here. Uh, let's say, you put your jack stands like right here on this um, sway bar bushing end. That's where I would put it. Um, if not, if you don't feel comfortable, you can put the sway bar, I meant the the jack stand right here, or maybe if you can fit it right in between that, and the same thing applies for the other side. Um, if not, you can put it right here on the subframe too, just in case. Um, so yeah. All right, so as you take off the last bolt, I'm gonna go ahead and drop it. And then we'll just let it hang just like that. Now, this is our vent hose right here. You can take this one off now, but I'm just going to let this whole thing hang. Um, just like that. And then in the back of the tank, we have our fuel neck filler hose. And then we have our vent hose right here. So for the vent hose... Um, you have these little two tabs at the end that are, whoops, sorry. 
that are right here. So I'm just gonna pinch these and then I'm just gonna spread them apart. Now, if some of these hoses are on there pretty tight, you can spray some WD-40 inside and then try to at least separate them. I'm gonna leave on the fuel neck filler hose. Um, I'm not gonna take that off yet. If I need to, then we'll go ahead and take it off, but for the time being, we'll just leave it on. So I'm using um, something to support the transmission. I'm at the, I'm using a transmission jack to support the fuel tank. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and take off our tank straps. Now, so if you're on the floor, you can use like some boxes, like before I used to use my toolboxes. Um, you can get those like at Harbor Freight. They would have like these little small boxes. Um, and then from there, if not, you can probably use your jack. I would say use your jack in the front of the end and just let the front sink down. Um, and then have something to support the rear. If you have two jacks, that would be perfect. Um, if not, then you can use your knees. I used to use my knees. This thing doesn't even have that much gas. All right, so um, tank straps. We got one in the rear and then one in the front. These are these metal brackets. Um, right here is our bolt that looks like a that's a 15 millimeter so we got two that we need to take off all right so now that we got this piece off what we're going to go ahead and do is that we are going to be just removing it completely so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull up the strap and then we got this little bracket that's in the way so we're just going to lift and then just kind of wiggle it out. And then you're going to twist it sideways. So this is the back piece. Just how that looks like. Now you can throw the back in the back and then put the front in the front. Um, just so you don't get unconfused. Alright, same thing applies to this one. But this one doesn't have that much you don't have to finesse it now if it's kind of hard to reach inside then we might need to drop down um, the drive shaft now that's just kind of for comfort wise easier to pull out the, um, the fuel pump if it is bad so just in case again we're just not doing that so I'm gonna go ahead and drop down the tank drop it down slowly All right, so I think that should be enough for right now. Just gonna kind of wiggle it. Now the front will always catch. But I don't even know how I'm gonna, this guy's gonna be on there. Yup, that sucker's gonna be on there. Let's see, I'm trying to push it back. For some reason, can't push it back. Well, probably because of this. That little shield, I don't know if you saw it on the camera, but this little shield was hitting against this. So let's see if we can push it back. Not really. I don't see me hitting, I just don't, I don't need that much. Let me just drop it down a little bit more. All right, so let's see if I can. No, can't drop it down all the way like that. But I mean, at least we can actually see what's going on. Kind of still hard for me to see all right so now at this point i'm just going to go ahead and um take off the the filler neck hose that's literally what's stopping me on this all right so you are going to need either a flathead screwdriver or an eight millimeter
All right, so now that we got that loosened, we are gonna go ahead and grab the filler neck and then twist it. Ah, this one's not that bad. This one actually spun out pretty free. Um, now, some of these guys can be on there pretty tight. So, what I'm gonna do is just wiggle up and down. It's slowly coming out. Now, just be careful with your eyes when pulling it. I already got it almost out, just so no fuel comes out. And then, there we have it. Let's see if we can push the tank back. Still, a little bit of resistance. I wonder what we're hitting on. No, it's coming down, yeah. So that made a little difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and just lower it a little bit. And then I'm gonna push back the tank and then that should give me some more room. So I can't drop down the tank fully just because I have my lift right here in the way. But I think I see where the leak is coming from. So coming right over here where this um, hose is, looks like where it's wet over here. I, mean, I don't feel anything. Oh, there it is. Right there. You guys saw it. Oh, yeah, I can feel the stress cracks. All right, so it's leaking right here. This is the hose. Um, doesn't look like it rubbed or anything, but that's where our leak is at. So let's go ahead and order. We can actually do a quick repair and call it a day, but obviously, you know, rather do the job right. Um, they do sell some quick disconnects for fuel and that can act as a permanent um, fix. Those will be like a nylon quick disconnect or you can put like a hose to connect into that but you would have to use that. The rubber hose would be like a temporary fix, um, just as a heads up. So let's go where the tank is at. So we need to grab the hose that's actually leaking to go match it up with the one that is our actual main issue so we have this little bracket that's right over here I'm gonna push out or I think pull in so pull towards you pull out sorry I can't see so this looks like you just gotta squeeze it in and then pull it out Sorry, it's just really hard to see. Yep, so this is just a squeeze tab. Probably what's keeping it from coming out is all the dirt. So you're gonna go ahead and squeeze the little tab that's on this end. And then I'm just gonna pick it out. So this is the little tab and then I just kind of went at the edge. So right here, there's a little edge that you can lift it up as, and I'm not prying against the lines, just lifting up. All right, so which line is it? So it's gonna be this one with the blue tab. So right here, and then from there, you're gonna, these are the squeeze in tabs. So I'll turn it towards us, and then you're gonna have to squeeze both tabs in. All right, so as you pull this hose out, fuel will come out because there's some fuel in that line.
Now I did drop down the tank a little bit more. Um, I was able to, the drive shaft was, was stopping it from the, the heat shield. And I was able to kind of like just pull it down forcefully from this area and all that. Don't pull too much because we still have that little hose right up there. So don't let it hang. Um, if you are going to take it out, just go ahead and disconnect that hose. Or if not, just give it a little bit of slack. But um, this is going to be our feed line hose. And then let's... Oh, snaps. Oh, God. Oh, no. So right over here, it looks super soft. Yep, you can you can see it. Looks like stretch, stretch marks. Let me get that zoomed in. So it's not, it doesn't look like it was rubbing. Never seen that before. It was probably rubbing into the tank or whatever, but it got super soft right here. Right here, that's where the leak is coming out. Right there where my thumb is at. Um, I'm going to go ahead and order a new one from the dealership. And then we'll go from there. Um, this is how the hose looks like on my end. So if you want to take a picture of it. This one connects to the fuel pump. And then this one connects to the fuel line in front of the tank. Alright, so the part number for the hose that we're going to be doing is going to be 8420271. And again, that's the part number for it. AutoZone does have it. Um, they might have it in stock. It's about $70. You just give them that part number and it should work out. Now, if depending if you get what it's all nylon on your fuel line. Whoops, back that up. Um, this is the... This is the updated version. The one with you would see would be the braided line. So this is the updated version of that. Um, if you get the one that's all nylon, I mean, eventually you're bound to happen on this. I think this one has like over 150,000 miles. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and install our, our fuel line. Um, but before doing that, Make sure you lube up the nipple with some grease. I use dielectric grease, you can use wheel bearing grease. And then, once we get that greased up, you're gonna go ahead and grease up this too. So the reason why I'm greasing this up is just that the O-ring for, for the fuel line does not um, roll back or anything it'll make the o-ring just to go in more smoother all right now i'm going to put this hose right over here and then we're going to go ahead and connect it and it should go nice and easy if it doesn't then we got an issue going on all right so now we're gonna go ahead and put in our hoses and then you just clip them down make sure they're all inserted in their in their slot so that's how it should look. Just in case, if you're wondering. And then you need to make sure. Well, this one I'm not going to worry about right now. I'll just try to clip it in. There will be some spots where they need to be clipped in. There's like one more over here. But. No, that's just pretty much it. It was just a little fast clip and then this little piece that clips them in. And then we lubed up this nipple, but we got to lube up that nipple too as well. So we're going to lube up that one. That's for the fuel line. All right, so we're going to go to lift back up the tank. Now, obviously, again, I don't have that much gas, so I'm just going to finesse this in. We just need to 
push up our heat shield. God damn. All right, there we go. Well, I don't remember it being that heavy when bringing it down. So I'm just gonna bring up my jack to support me. All right, so with that being said, we're gonna have our fuel tank still held up. And then before fully tightening down everything, we're just gotta make sure everything's centered. Now, if you get anything confused, pretty much this will be in front of the vehicle. And then obviously this will be in the rear of the vehicle. So there is a huge distinguish in the two. So the one with the shorter end where the bolt goes through, that sits on the front of the fuel tank. And the one with the longer strap piece where the bolt goes through, that's in the rear. So we're gonna go ahead and just slide in our bracket. And then we'll slide in the rear one. All right, so the rear one will go something like this. All right, then I'm gonna lift it up some more. That's where the tank will get a little bit more close as possible. All right, so we're gonna be as close as possible like that. So, Make sure you always stand everything in by hand. But I usually do these in by with the tool just to make it more easier. Just have it centered. All right, so we got the first one initially started and now we're gonna go do the rear one. Now, if it doesn't wanna go up, you need to probably lift up the rear just a little bit. I Since the tank doesn't have that much gas, I just use, you know, some wheel power on that. And then coming back where the filler neck is, we're gonna go ahead and insert this. So we're gonna bend the hose towards us, towards the rear of the vehicle, and then we're gonna lift it up and then put it right in. Now, if you need to use some, some lube, you're more than welcome to do that. I would recommend it to do it on these little lines. All right, so now that I got that lubed up, we're gonna go ahead and I'm sliding the hose all the way to the right and then bringing it back to the left. Now we have some pinch welds. I meant pinch welds, uh, pinch clips. So we'll just make sure that they fully clip in. All right, those are clipped in. All right, so now we're gonna put on our charcoal canister. So this shouldn't be too complicated. So just make sure it slides in its little pin and then we have a notch that'll be used as a little reference. And the same thing, just thread in these ones by hand. All right, now that we got that bolted in, we are going to go ahead and tighten down our fuel line, sorry, our filler neck. I don't know, can you guys see that? Yeah, you guys can see that. Alright, so now that we have that done, that's good. Double check. I'm gonna go ahead and bolt down the tank straps. I'm not worried about that right now. So go ahead and connect this hose. Make sure it's all the way in. Pull them back if they do stay in. And then right here, we're gonna go ahead and lube up this little nipple. And then we'll go ahead and connect this fuel line in. 
Make sure that it's centered. Make sure it's fully seated in. Clip it down and then pull right up and that's it. Um, let's go ahead and check what's going on. Once you're done doing that, we're gonna go ahead and start the vehicle. Um, now obviously we have air in the system. Yeah, see the vehicle has about 167, so right around there. Um, so just gonna prime it up real quick. And then start it and then go ahead and recheck everything on that and then literally the fuel was leaking right here um, and you could just see it drip right down um, other than that um, if this video helped you out give it a thumbs up comment down below if you have any questions and hit that subscribe button for more coming videos in the future and thanks for watching